Hey there guys, it's Tina and I am back and my shoulders are back as well. I love an off the shoulder top, okay? It is my favorite thing to wear. It just, I don't know, it gives a little bit of sexy without being too much because you're showing some skin. What? And I, listen, I love it, all right? But anyway, another thing that I absolutely have been loving is fude. And for those of you who don't know, fude in Japanese means brushes. And originally it referred to calligraphy style brushes, but since then fude has evolved to include makeup brushes and it's become synonymous with Japanese style makeup brushes in the beauty community. So you'll hear me just talk about fude as if it's just, you know, it's, it's a thing, everybody knows it, but that's what fude means. And sometimes I'll say fude brushes, even though that's repetitious. Obviously, I don't need to say fude brushes, but it just flows better, you know what I mean? And in this video, we're gonna talk about the care and maintenance of your fude. If you have delved into the world of fude at all, then you will know that these brushes are expensive. They're made from natural bristles, whether it's high quality goat hair or squirrel hair, or now silver fox, we also have horse. There are a variety of natural hair bristles that are used to make these brushes, and they're a little bit high maintenance. So there's a lot that goes into caring for these brushes, and they're relatively expensive compared to cheaper alternatives on the market or synthetic brushes. So with that huge investment, you do wanna make sure you're taking good care of these brushes so they will last you for not necessarily a lifetime but they should be lasting you for years the typical lifespan of a fude brush is three to five years now i don't know about you but i don't need to be rotating through my brushes every three to five years all right so i definitely want to expand the lifespan of my brushes and get great use out of them so that comes with proper care and maintenance and that's what we're going to talk about in this video now this is going to be a long one so i'm going to leave timestamps down below so you can jump ahead to whichever section most appeals to you or whichever section you want to learn more about so check below in the description box for those timestamps and I will kind of leave a little menu over here so you know what we're going to run through in this video so hopefully this will help you navigate this very lengthy in-depth but very useful video. So I'm just gonna stop yapping and get into the details. So the first thing that you need to keep in mind when you get your food aid brushes or any makeup brushes is storage. So you're gonna have everyday storage, long-term storage for brushes that you probably don't use every day and you wanna keep them stored away either as collectibles or maybe you're just not getting the best use out of them so you'll get to them later, you know what I mean? So for my everyday brushes, there are a few ways that I store them and these brushes sit on my desk, they're with within reach so I use these brushes quite frequently maybe not every day but at least I reach for them on a regular basis now the first way I'll mention is my preferred way it's the easiest way to store your brushes and that's within a cup holder now these don't have to be specific makeup brush holders even though you can find those from various brands from various retailers you can find them at Sephora Ulta Target I even found a couple at home goods so these have like just special sayings on them that are are makeup related you know so you can find fun brush holders but they don't have to be specific makeup brush holders you can literally go into any office organization section in any retail store so if that's a Target or a Walmart an Ikea a home goods and find cup holders that are meant for organizing your pens pencils and office supplies and use them to store your brushes you can even go into your kitchen or bathroom organization sections and find find cup holders that are used for holding your toothpaste and your toothbrush and these can still be used for holding your makeup brushes so there's no specific requirements it just needs to be a cup holder and you just literally pop your brushes in here now what I usually do for my cup holders actually before I get into anything is I get little beads so these are gonna help with securing the brushes in place so they're not just rolling all over the place and I just pop my brushes in here so I don't fill them up all the way to the top but I can use these to store my brushes and these are perfect they work well they're easy no muss no fuss this is literally the easiest way to store your brushes and I use this to store my eyeshadow brushes mainly and some of my face brushes because you just pop them in and grab them and go but some food brushes 
are a little bit more special. They have softer hairs that need a little bit more tender, loving care. So you need to separate them from each other. So right now, these are mainly goat hair brushes that are a little bit more low maintenance so they can sit up against each other. They won't kink or fray if they're pressed up against each other. So this is an easy way for me to organize my goat hair brushes. But you have more finicky brushes like squirrel hair and fox hair brushes that are a little bit more, mm, a little bit more high maintenance maintenance so they need to kind of stand apart from each other they don't need to touch each other because the bristles are really delicate they're prone to frizzing and fraying and they can even kink a little bit or get indents in them if they're leaned up against like the lip of the brush holder or if they're even resting up against each other so the other alternative is a brush tree I got this brush tree to just try it out to see how it fits in my overall organization to see if I like it now a brush tree has dual purposes so you can use it for storing your brushes or you can use it for drying your brushes where you'll just store them upside down when they're wet and they will dry with air completely circulating and I think that's a great way to dry your brushes but I don't like a brush tree. I just, it's okay, like it's doing fine in my collection, but it's bulky, it's not as easy to move around, and I'm just not having the best time with this. But if you don't mind this kind of storage organization method, then this might work great for you. So it has little cutouts that are insulated with silicone. So you just slide your brush handles in there, either upright or underneath again if you're trying to dry them. And it keeps your brushes really separated from each other. And there are various sizes of holes in here. So you can put different size brushes through each of the holes depending on where it fits. And I think it works okay. Just again, not my preferred way. The next way is a new way for me and it is an alternative to a brush tree and that is these little silicone tray brush holders. I love these. I recently discovered these after I did my Meet My Food A brushes and one of you guys actually recommended this and I went onto Amazon and grabbed these. I believe they were like $10 a piece. I grabbed quite a few of them. I will leave the link to the one that I picked up. It's really simple. It's just a rectangular tray with a silicone insert and the insert has cutouts. Actually, let me grab a new one. So here's the one that I picked up and as you can see, it can be used for other items apart from brushes. So you can use it to store like your eyeliner pencils, your other makeup tools like tweezers or even lipsticks and lip glosses. So it's not restricted to organizing makeup brushes. But for me, it has become the perfect way to store some of my really delicate haired brushes. So it has the silicone insert with the cutouts again and it is removable so you can take it out and clean the inside in case you wanted to do that you know. I will clean my storage containers ever so often just to remove any dust or makeup residue. You never know like things get everywhere right. So you, it's removable you can clean it. So there is the silicone insert with cutouts and you just insert your brushes and you can store your makeup brushes however you choose for me i store my brushes by the hair type so in this i will have just my squirrel hair brushes or my goat hair brushes but i don't necessarily store them together because for me the more delicate bristles are better to be stored separately so this is a great organization method again for your brushes so those are the three ways i've been storing my everyday makeup brushes brushes that i use regularly and i need to have within reach however i have brushes that i'm storing long term because I don't use them anymore or I'm keeping them for collector's purposes and I don't want to get rid of them so I am storing them within drawers which is my ideal way to store my brushes but you can also store them within boxes and I'll show you how I store my brushes long term. So here I have one of my drawers that I will store brushes in so this is one of the acrylic drawers the ones that you see behind me and this has a nice depth so I can store brushes in here without damaging them. What I will do is I will put a microfiber towel down. You can also use a shelf liner, those no slip shelf liners, which is probably your best bet because that's gonna secure your brushes and they won't go rolling around in your drawers. But I just use a microfiber towel because why not? This also keeps them from rolling around. So I will grab my brushes and then I will grab a brush guard. If you have makeup brushes, you need to get brush guards, hands down, period. They are pretty inexpensive. You can find 
find them again from different retailers you can find them online you can even find them in store my original brush guards are from the brand brush guard and those were very expensive now you can find them for like five dollars for a pack of a hundred so they're very inexpensive and they're key to keeping your brushes really secure so I will place my brush in a brush guard and then I will lay them in the drawer like this and what I will do is alternate the direction that I store them so if I have two brushes I will put them next to each other but alternate so the brush heads will not be next to each other and I just stagger them throughout the drawer and you can lay them on top of each other just make sure that the brush guard is secure and it's not like snagging the hairs and that's why you want to have a no slip layer on the bottom either cloth or a shelf liner so they're not just moving around which can cause some friction and cause the hairs to break so I will just lay them out and store them just like that no muss no fuss the other way is to put them in boxes so I have boxes that my brushes come in like the more high-end brushes that are very expensive come with their own boxes so any storage box that you have again make sure it's lined with like a cloth or a no slip liner you can even use paper towel or tissue paper tissue paper is actually great if you're gonna store them in boxes the other thing is if you're gonna store your brushes long term you want to grab some desiccants now these are the little do not eat packets that you see in your shoe boxes or when you buy a purse those humidity resistant packs so these are meant to keep items dry and you want to make sure that your brushes are in a cool dry place you don't want them exposed to heat or direct sunlight or humidity so don't store them in your bathroom don't store them in your sunroom put them away in a cool dry place and if you can grab some desiccants and place in the drawer or the box with them so these are reusable ones that actually are rechargeable so these actually change color as they absorb moisture so when it goes from this kind of translucent color to a deep color i know i have to recharge these by microwaving them and then they're ready to go again so i like these i got these off amazon but again if you have some of these just lying around from your shoe boxes or from your handbag purchases you can grab those and just toss them in your drawer or box with your brushes now the desiccants will help keep your brushes humidity free but another benefit is that it will ward off any bugs that are attracted to natural hair bristles i know bugs yes bugs will be attracted to your natural hair bristles so you can prevent that by using a desiccant or even mothballs now how about traveling with your brushes here's the thing I don't like to travel with sensitive brushes because I'm just like oh my god they're gonna get damaged I can't do it no 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 so I mainly travel with my less expensive brushes and goat hair brushes because those are just less prone to getting damaged they're more resilient but if I'm traveling with my brushes I will literally just put them in a case and bring them along okay this is a great case this is from Esom. this is from Muse Beauty Pro they have a great organizer here and this is ideal because it's a hard case and I can lay my brushes in here either in a brush guard or without if I store them in a brush guard what I'll do is wrap them in some kind of towel or washcloth or even like paper towel and then hold them together with a rubber band because I don't want them moving around because again if you move hairs around in the brush guard they can get snagged and break so I don't want that to happen and when you're traveling things are moving around so either I'll just put my brushes directly in here or secure them that way and then zip and go and this is a hard case so this is perfect for traveling with makeup actually but brushes are great for putting in this you can also get like a brush holder or a brush roll but just a makeup case should be okay with traveling with your brushes just be mindful that you might not want to travel with your most expensive brushes all right so now that we talked about storage and traveling and all that good stuff let's get into the real nitty-gritty okay cleaning your brushes I know that's what you're here for so let's just jump right into that here's the first thing I'm gonna tell you to get microfiber towels get these these are gonna save your brush life I got like a six pack from Target with different textures so I have a really soft one these are meant for cleaning okay for dusting around your house and like wiping countertops or whatever but these are great for cleaning your brushes this is for everyday cleaning all right 
So the first thing you're gonna do is spot clean your brushes. So with food aid brushes, you don't want to wash them too often as that can weaken the strands and can damage the tips of the bristles, which is where the real softness comes from, okay? It is the uncut, ultra fine tips of these bristles that make them so special and make them feel so soft against your skin. Oh my God. So you wanna ensure that the tips of your bristles maintain that softness, maintain that fine tip. So you want to take care of these babies so the tips don't break off. So that is the first thing that can deteriorate the quality of your brushes is breaking off the tips by mishandling them or misusing them. For instance, using a squirrel hairbrush with liquid products or cream products that can break off the hair follicles and break off the hair tips because they're very fine and delicate. So running them through thick products can actually damage the hair so using squirrel hairbrushes with emollient products are a no-no. Also using them on skin that has not been set or oily skin, like squirrel hairbrushes are not recommended for oily skin because the residue is going to build up on the bristles and cause them to break. So that's what you want to avoid. And in addition to that, you can lose brush hairs. They can get tangled and clumped together when used with cream products or if they have product residue built up in them they can lose the hair or break off just by virtue of not keeping them clean and using them with the wrong products. So that's what you wanna avoid. So with that being said, you wanna keep them clean, but you don't want to wash these too often. In fact, for squirrel hair brushes, oh my God, they recommend washing them only a couple of times a year. I know. I know I cannot I cannot do that like they literally recommend two to three times a year who are you talking to you're telling me that I need to wash my brushes maybe once every six months no ma'am I cannot do it I am not gonna be able I just cannot so I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I use to still clean my brushes still keep them hygienic without damaging the hair so like I said first thing you want microfiber towels you don't want a regular old cotton towel because cotton I don't know if you know this can be very damaging to your hair okay that's why when you dry your hair if you have curly hair they tell you to use like a t-shirt material or microfiber towel because that will reduce the frizz so if your hair frizzes from a normal cotton towel what do you think is going to happen to your brushes your natural hair brushes exactly you need to treat them like you would treat your hair so you want to get a microfiber towel this is key microfiber towel i'm not gonna stop saying that until you get it so after every use you're gonna grab your used brush and your microfiber towel and i'm gonna show you this up close so you can see what i'm doing so you're gonna run the brush in a single direction across your microfiber towel flip the brush around as you go to get all the sides but you're running it in one direction you're not gonna go back and forth because that can break the bristles that is not what you want and it's better to clean the bristles from the side so you're not damaging the very tips of the brush however a lot of us pick up our product and apply it to our skin using the tops of the bristles so obviously there's gonna be product buildup at the very tops of your brushes now what you're gonna do with that is gently go back and forth at the tips be careful be very gentle do not rub the bristles into the microfiber towel just running it along will remove the product because that's what a microfiber towel does it will grab at all that excess powder residue which is what you should be using these brushes for is mainly powder so you're just gonna gently even go in circular motions just to get rid of the residue or just go back and forth very slowly very gently don't be vigorous like i said don't do it you're gonna regret it after spending that much on these brushes now you're gonna end up with a scratchy brush because you broke off the tip so very gently run your brushes against the microfiber towel to remove the excess residue and then they're good to go for your next use you can also do that for spot cleaning like between products so if you use a brush for your blush and you want to use it for your highlighter you can also use the microfiber towel to clean in between uses and another thing that I need to mention which is very critical I cannot stress this enough do not use any of the spot cleaning solutions for your food aid no need to do this spot cleaning just quickly wipe your brushes off in a microfiber towel if you're gonna use them again or use them for another product do not use these for your natural hair brushes these are jam-packed with alcohol they're fast drying right like they literally will dry in a few seconds less than a minute so what ingredient do you need to be fast drying alcohol and what does alcohol do 
dry the hell out of your brushes. So you do not want to go ahead and use alcohol on any of your natural hair brushes. It's gonna make the bristles really dry. Not only that, it's gonna cause them to break easily because it is pretty much dehydrating the hell out of your natural bristles. Think about these natural bristles the way you would with your natural hair. If your hair is dry, it's gonna become brittle and it's gonna break easily and you wanna avoid that at all costs. So take these out of your arsenal do not even consider these for your natural hair bristles but you can use them for synthetic brushes which sometimes i'll do but i've been staying away from these i still have them but do not use these for your food a child don't do it all right next up is washing your brushes which again if you have like squirrel hair brushes or silver fox hair brushes you don't want to wash them too frequently but guess what over time they're still gonna need to be washed for your goat hair brushes you can wash them a little bit more frequently and I recommend washing your brushes as needed so if you can go a month without washing your brushes good for you and the way to ensure that you don't overwash your brushes is to have multiple brushes laying around so if if you only have one brush that you use for your foundation then you're gonna need to wash that a lot more than you would if you had two or three that you use interchangeably so keep that in mind maybe you want to get multiples of brushes that you use constantly now for foundation brushes that you use with liquid or cream foundations I recommend washing them at least once every two weeks and those brushes are typically goat hair brushes anyway so those are a little bit more resilient they can hold up to multiple washings so you can be a little bit less careful with these not that you're gonna be reckless but you can still be a little bit harder on these brushes so I'm gonna show you what I used to wash my brushes and show you how I actually wash my brushes so the first tool in my arsenal is a silicone brush cleaning glove now they also have silicone mats available all over the place now there's so many places you can get a silicone mat before they were like low-key hard to get but now they're all over the place because everybody wants a piece of the pie and they're flooding the market with all the tools you can wish for this is a Sigma cleaning glove I love this thing and this is actually my second one I had one for at least at least six seven years that was perfectly fine except it got a rip so I had to get rid of it because it started getting wet on the inside when I was washing my brushes now I could have still used it but I just said you know what it's time to replace it so I got a new one so these actually last you a pretty long time even though they may be a little pricey up front so either get a brush washing glove or a silicone mat to help you with washing your brushes then you want to think about your brush shampoos or your brush cleansers now this is a very critical thing okay you have to be careful about what you use to clean your brushes do not be out here using dish soap or using some Irish spring soap those are gonna dry out the bristles and damage them so you want to stay away from harsh cleansers hello did you hear me stay away from harsh cleansers now a lot of people recommend using baby shampoo I have never used baby shampoo but baby shampoo is apparently very gentle if a baby can get it in their eyes then I'm sure they're gentle enough for your brushes so that's an option I've heard mixed reviews about baby shampoo so proceed with caution maybe get a cheap one to try out initially maybe not get a cheap one get it get a little small one to try out first but my first recommendation is actually the Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap. This is the liquid version. They also have a solid version. The liquid version for me is perfect. Now this contains 32 fluid ounces. I've had this for years. Is it expired? Is it expired? Oh my god, the soap expire. Yes, it does. There is a 24 month open jar symbol on this, which means I need to use this up within two years, which you know what? I am still good. I am within that timeline. So we're still good so this is my recommendation I've been using this for years and it works really good you just need a little bit of this and it suds up really well but it is not drying to your brushes because there is no actual foaming agents in this formulation and you can check out the ingredients and you'll see that there are tons of organic oils in the ingredient list that are saponified into soap and glycerin so they're not going to leave an oily residue on your brushes but they're still going to be somewhat conditioning without leaving a residue which is ideal you don't want a soap that's going to leave a residue 
because that again can damage your brushes. You want a clean rinse in soap and I find Dr. Bronner's is perfect. The next soap that I use is the Beauty Blender Solid Pro. They also have just the regular solid which is also pretty great but I like the Pro because it just works a little better on like really stubborn brushes like foundation brushes. I need something with a little bit more elbow grease and this one works for me. And again, the ingredients on this are very gentle on the brushes, and this is specifically formulated for cleaning your makeup brushes. So this is a great one to use with your goat hair brushes. I don't use this for my squirrel hair brushes or my silver fox brushes because I want the most gentle cleanser with those, and this one can be a little bit, not, not harsh, but it's a little bit more, you know, rough tough than the Dr. Bronner. So the Dr. Bronner's I will use for squirrel hair and silver fox hair brushes. And the other cleanser that I will use for those really delicate brushes is from Alori Collection. Now I'll leave the link to this website down below but Alori sells out of their products really fast because they're that great. So this is their vegan goat milk cleanser which is great. This is a specific scent so they have different scents that you can use. This is the peony and plum. This is so great because again, it's really gentle on the brushes and it smells great and it rinses clean without leaving a residue. So all three of my cleansers rinse clean, which again is key. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through how I wash my Fude brushes. Now I have another brush washing video. I will link it over here actually. I posted it years ago and so many people were appalled in the comments. They're like, oh my God, you're being too rough with your brushes. Oh my God, you're damaging your brushes. And <laughs> It looks like I was being extremely rough with the brushes and it looks like I could have been damaging them. But what people don't realize is that a lot of my brushes at that time were synthetic brushes and goat hair brushes. So even though I was a little bit rough, those brushes are able to hold up a little bit more if you're not the most gentle with them. So it was fine. None of my brushes have fallen apart, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there. None of those brushes have fallen apart and I still kind of low-key wash those brushes the same way. Okay, but for these brushes, you have to be a little bit more gentle. So the first thing I'm going to do is fill up two bowls of warm water. And I want it to be pretty warm because this is going to help break down the residue in the brushes. And this is the best way I've found to actually do it. I have one bowl that I use for like washing the actual brush and then another bowl that I use for rinsing. So I'm going to start out by washing my foundation brush, which I use with liquid foundation. And this is a goat hair brush. So it's a little bit more resilient. It can stand up to a little bit more scrub in and I'm going to use the Beauty Blender Solid for this because it works great to remove foundation residue out of brushes. So to start out I'm going to wet the bristles of the brush by dipping it into the first bowl of water and then I will run it along the Beauty Blender Solid and you just go back and forth. You're not doing circular buffing motions or scrubbing motions. You're just gently going back and forth to pick up some of the cleanser on the brush and I'm going to use the face side of my brush glove for this since it has the larger nubs on it to help me work the cleanser through the bristles and I'm just gonna gently move my brush back and forth I'm not being too rigorous with this even though they're goat hair bristles I can be a little bit more rough I still want to be very gentle with moving the brush across the glove and the knobs in the glove will help to clean the brushes so I don't have to do too much work myself to clean the bristles and I will redip my brush into the water just to get a little bit more activation from the cleanser and this will also help to rinse the residue from the brush as I go. So I'll redip in the water and work the brush against the glove until I get the residue completely removed from the bristles. And I'll keep going back and forth until the cleanser is completely rinsed from the bristles. And you want to make sure you get rid of all the cleanser from your brush. Now the great thing about these cleansers is that they rinse clean very easily so I don't have to worry about having residue left behind. Now once I've completely cleaned my brush, I'm going to squeeze the excess water from the bristles. Now don't tug at the bristles. You don't want to pull at the bristles you just want to gently squeeze them and I love this glove because it has little ridges in the thumb area that you can use to help squeeze the excess water from your brushes. So I'm going to squeeze the water out and then lay my brush down and continue cleaning the rest of my brushes. The next brush I'm going to grab is a squirrel hair brush. So now I'm not going to use the Beauty Blender cleanser. I'm going to use the Alori Collection Vegan Goat Cleanser, which is much more gentle and it is great for using with squirrel hair brushes. So what I'm going to do again, you're going to wet the bristles. You do not want to apply the cleanser to dry 
dry bristles you want to wet the bristles first so I'm gonna dunk the bristles in the water again warm water it's gonna loosen up some of the product and then run the brush very gently across the top of the cleanser you don't want to go in circular buffing motions at all you want to be very gentle and run it just on the sides of the bristles and I'm gonna do the same thing with this brush I'm gonna just go back and forth across the larger nodules on the glove to remove the product and I'll dip it in the water again and keep rinsing and repeating until I get all the residue out of my brush now with squirrel hair brushes I only use these with powder so they're easier to clean they don't take a lot of work to get the powder out which is great I don't have to really work at these brushes to get the residue out and I can keep them really pristine and in great shape so I'll just rinse again to make sure I get rid of all the cleanser residue again this cleanser rinse is really clean and I'll squeeze the excess water out of the bristles again and shape them and then place the brush to the side while I continue with the other brushes now I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of my goat hair face brushes these can take a little bit more action so I'm gonna grab my dr. Bronner soap this is the liquid soap and I'm gonna get a little bit of that on my glove and then I will dampen the bristles of each of my brushes and pick up some of the Dr. Bronner's on the bristles and I'll go back and forth until I coat all the brushes in a little bit of the Dr. Bronner. So I'll leave these brushes to the side just a little bit while I clean some of my other brushes so the cleanser can sit and start dissolving the product that may be in those bristles. And while those sit, I'm gonna grab one of my squirrel hair brushes. This is a newer one to my collection and I need to wash it before I use it. So I'm gonna use the Allori brush cleanser with this one. Again, I use the Allori with my squirrel hair brushes. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before is just swipe across the top of the cleanser to get some of the product on the brush and then I'll go between the glove and the water just to make sure that I completely rinse and clean the bristle so there's no residue left behind then I'll grab the brushes that were sitting off to the side and clean these as well again these can take a little bit more scrubbing so with some of these brushes in addition to going back and forth very gently over the brush glove I will also do slight circular motions just to get the bristles really clean and I'm not really pushing against the glove with this I'm being very gentle with how I move the bristles around because again I don't want to damage the tips of the brush but I still want to get them clean right so I'll just go back and forth rinse repeat and then squeeze the excess water out of all the brushes I want to make sure that the water actually runs clear and there's no excess cleanser left behind because again you want these to be completely clean for my eye brushes which are mostly goat hair I don't think I have any squirrel hair brushes these are goat hair and goat hair blends I will actually use the Dr. Bronner's again and I will grab these in sets like I'm not going to be bothered with washing these one at a time so I will grab these and dampen the bristles and get some of the Dr. Bronner's on the glove and then make sure that I coat all the bristles with the Dr. Bronner's and then I can scrub these either two at a time or one at a time and just go back and forth again these are a little bit more rough and tumble but I'm still trying to be gentle so I'll just go back and forth again in the direction of the bristles to remove the excess residue and to also remove all the excess cleanser and make sure that I completely rinse them clean and squeeze out the excess water and then with the rest of the water I'll make sure that I clean my glove and then I'll also rinse the cleansers to get any of the makeup residue off those as well so I will rinse my soaps and put them out to dry like my beauty blender I remove it from the container so it can air dry completely and then yeah rinse my bowls and we're good to go now once I'm done with washing all the brushes now I'm gonna take care to dry them so I'm gonna grab my microfiber towel again and I am going to gently squeeze the excess water out of the bristles using the microfiber towel this microfiber towel is gonna help start the drying process of your brushes so you don't want your brushes to be completely wet you want to remove as much of the excess water as you can one it will help start the drying process but it will also ensure that the ferro Ferrules aren't gonna be wet and you're not gonna have residue loosening up the glue in your ferrules because that can cause your brushes to fall apart your brushes can still get incidentally wet like it's fine if the ferrule gets wet a lot of people are like oh don't get the ferrule wet it's fine you paid a lot of money for these brushes they're going through a crazy manufacturing process so trust and believe the glue that's in those ferrules is pretty high quality and pretty strong your ferrules are secure okay so a little bit of incidental water is not gonna 
and damage them okay I've only had about two or three brushes fall apart for me and those were from Sigma like the original Sigma brushes and Morphe so that goes to show that cheap brushes will fall apart but your high quality brushes are not going to deteriorate because they got a little damp okay so you're gonna squeeze the excess water from your brush bristles with your microfiber towel and again do not pull at the bristles there's no need for you to be pulling at the bristles just squeeze them between the microfiber towel and that will be sufficient to remove the excess water from your brushes now here's a great tip that I picked up from Tara baby she had mentioned this in one of her videos and I was like oh my god that is perfect so I'm gonna grab some aloe vera gel this is a hundred percent alcohol free you do not not want alcohol anywhere near your natural hair bristles okay it will dry them out and cause them to break so make sure any cleanser that you're using is alcohol free so the aloe that I'm getting is alcohol free and I'm going to apply this to my hands before I shape my brushes and I'm gonna rub my hands together so the majority of that gel is absorbed into my hands so one my hands are hydrated but there's still some residue on my hands that I'm gonna use to help shape my brushes so I'm gonna use this very light layer of of aloe vera gel to help shape my brushes so I'm gonna run the brushes between my hands just to get them back to their original shape and then I will slide them into a brush guard now choose your brush guards based on the size of your brushes brush guards are just tubes of thin fabric mesh that you're gonna use to hold the bristles together and the brush guards can be very thin and soft to kind of more rigid and my white brush guards are a little bit stiffer than my black brush guards so I use my white brush guards when I need a little bit more shaping so for my larger face brush Brushes, I will use my white brush guards and you want to slide the brush guard on from the handle of your brushes So the very bottom of the brush you're gonna slide it upwards to the bristles You do not want to do it the other way around. I'm just gonna put that out there I didn't think you would but just in case you were thinking about doing it that way Don't do it that way slide it from the handle up so that will ensure that there's no fraying of the bristles and I will do that for all the brushes and once I have my brush guard securely in place I am going to lay these on my brush drying tray. I have been using this brush tray from Rivon Lee and I've been loving it. There are a few key features to this brush tray that makes it ideal for drying my brushes. So it's aerated so you'll see little slots in the brush tray which means I will get full air circulation. So my brushes are no longer just laying on a towel or a flat surface. They are on this brush tray which allows air to fully circulate the handles and the heads of the brush. And then there's a little bit of a ledge in the back of the brush tray that you will balance the handles on. And that makes sure that your brushes are being dried at an angle so they're not completely flat. And any water will drain away from the brush ferrule because of gravity, right? So I love that it has a little ledge in the back that creates a tilt to my brushes. And then on the very front of the brush tray is a pink silicone material that one is gonna keep the brushes in place they're not gonna slip off the brush tray because remember they're at an angle so they're more likely to fall off but that silicone edge keeps them from slipping off and two it's a soft silicone material so it's not gonna damage the bristles of my brush so I have been loving this brush tray I think the design is great and there are three levels so you can dry a ton of brushes on this and I think it's a great investment you're already investing a lot into your brushes so you want to make sure that they're well cared for and investing in some really great tools to help you with the maintenance is a great way to go so I would definitely recommend this brush tray I will leave my link down below it's an affiliate link but there's no pressure like you don't have to use this particular brush tray but I wanted to recommend this one because it's so well made like you can feel the quality in this design and in the materials that were used to make it and this is gonna last you for years so I think it's a great investment so you can definitely check it out again and then I will leave my brushes to just dry take their grand old time drying I recommend drying face brushes at least for a complete day before you remove the brush guards for eye brushes you can just dry them for a day they're smaller so there's less to dry so they usually dry overnight for me or within a day my face brushes take a little bit longer and I allow them the time to dry because you don't want to use damp brushes you don't want to use your brushes until they're completely dry because again that can damage the hair think about your natural hair brushes the way you would think about your hair you're not going to try to manipulate and detangle your hair when it's completely wet right you want to make sure that you remove the majority of the water from it and even when you're detangling your hair you want to apply some conditioner before you go through it because if you try 
try to comb your hair out wet without conditioner, it can rip at the hairs. Think about your makeup brushes in the same way. So you don't want to use them when they're damp. You don't want to dip them into products and then run them against your face while they're still in their delicate drying stage. So let them completely dry before you use them. Now with the face brushes, I will remove the brush guards after a day just to allow them to naturally dry to their full fluffiness because that is kind of the best way to use your face brushes when they are completely fluffed up and feel like soft clouds on your face. So it's kind of best to allow them to completely dry without the brush guards so that way they can fluff up. Now I do use my brush guard for some of my brushes just to keep them from fraying like my P8. I keep a brush guard on that when I store it. I don't leave it to its own devices okay. You need to be controlled and it needs to stay nice and secure. So I keep my brush guard on my P8 and it keeps its shape and it's still fluffy and soft but I don't use this as much so it is fully brush guarded until I want to pull it out for a special occasion. Now with my other brushes I put them to work. I use them. I don't have them sitting around gathering dust okay. I spent good money on them and I'm going to use them. So that is it this was a long video but hopefully the timestamps helped you out and you were able to navigate the video however you chose so hopefully my tips and tricks were helpful for you guys kind of helped to take the guesswork out of maintaining and cleaning and washing your food aid because i know a lot of people get nervous when they think about spending this much money on brushes and then have to be so extra delicate with them like oh my god baby them no use your brushes enjoy your brushes you spent money on them and that is my last recommendation. Enjoy your brushes. With squirrel hair brushes, just, just be a little bit mindful. Don't use them with creams and liquids, but still enjoy them. Like even if you have oily skin, use them with your oily skin. Even if you're gonna use them to set your foundation with powder, do that. Just don't press them into the skin. Just lightly sweep across your face. Like a little bit of incidental oils ain't gonna kill them. You know what I mean? So enjoy your brushes. Even though they're pricey and even though they're an investment, you can take really great care of them really easily. There's not too much to my maintenance. It's really simple for me to maintain my brushes. So again, hopefully this video was helpful for you. I will leave some details down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick some of these things up, you know, for ease of use. If there's an asterisk next to any of the links, that means they're affiliate links, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links or if you use my affiliate code. So just be mindful of that. It's a great way to show your appreciation for the channel and to give me a little bit of kickback because I do put it right back into my content. So if you use my links, thank you so, so much. I truly do appreciate it. But if you are skeptical about that and you don't wanna shop that way, just do what you usually do. No muss, no fuss, it's fine. I just still appreciate that you are watching this video. If you liked it, definitely hit the thumbs up button. That also helps. Favorite and share, you know? Give your girl a little bit of promo. And until my next video, which will be very soon, enjoy your food day and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys!